It actually holds court here. Types of things that oh, really? that come Good evening. The jail and welcome to the June 13th meeting of the Planning Policy Commission. I think we're all ready. Um, tonight we're going to reopen the public hearing on the Shoreline Master Plan. See if you guys have any more questions or updates for the city. But first of all, we have two minutes that need approval. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes for May 23rd? I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes of May 23rd, 2019. Do I have a second? Second. Are there any discussion, changes, corrections? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion passes. So the minutes of the May 29th meeting, do I have a motion to approve? I make a motion to approve the meetings from the May 29th. Um, do I have a second? A second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion carries. So with that, we're going to, before we reopen the public hearing, we're gonna have a presentation by Doug Yormick uh, on any updates that he wants to give us on the master program. So this presentation is a little bit different than the last one. So in, in some of the slides, I actually have um, some talking points, discussion points for um, the specific regulations that we'll be doing. So I encourage that during those slides, if you have any questions regarding those particular regulation changes, to just chime in, um, interrupt, and, and just uh, let me know your comments. Um, so with that, I guess I'll, I'll start. So um, Doug, I'm Doug Dormick. I've met most of you uh, last time on the 23rd. Um, for those of you who weren't here, uh, I'm an assistant planner with Development Services. And with me is Alex Capron from Environmental Planner from the Watershed Company and Maria Sanderko mm -hmm. from Department of Ecology. So <clears throat> thank you for the, the discussion on the goals and policy last time. Um, and during that discussion, you gave me some homework to do. Um, just two minor changes to um, one policy mm -hmm. and one goal. And uh, I just let you know that I've made those changes and um, they'll be reflected in the SMP. Um, and then I also s said that I would update um, our changes to our wetland standards based on the 2018 ecology guidance. And we have discussed this as a department and we are not going to be using the, the um, updated ecology guidance. Um, we're going to adopt our current critical areas ordinance with its uh, wetland regulations. And then we're going to revisit that at another time um, as we're updating our land use code currently, so. So before you leave that slide, mm -hmm. I know that you guys uh, talked about uh, getting together a commission or something to decide on the wayfinding sign policy. I, I was, uh, I didn't hear the inclusion of the Arts Commission on that, so I'd like to make sure that you include them in that. Okay. Um, just there, the group that's working on wayfinding and branding is already assembled um, and was uh, is being led by the Parks Department. I'm not sure um, exactly which groups are reflected in that and I'm not sure that we get to influence who they have put into that group. I'd be surprised if they're not included right now. Um, I, I'm, I'm happy for us to encourage their inclusion. I'm just not sure that since DSD is not leading that um, process. That's fine. Okay. That's fine. I'm, I'm not demanding that no. they do it. I just no, think it's a nice great, if they. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Because I know that we've talked about wayfinding signs uh, so, uh, extensively while I was on the Arts Commission. Yeah. And then um, as a reminder, uh, today's meeting is 
going to focus on specific regulations that are changing um, and not focus on any minor grammatical errors. But if you did find any minor gra grammatical errors, please let me know, um, whether it's just an email and I'll, I'll get those incorporated. Um, uh, and then, yes. I have a question on the, on the update. Uh, I'm gonna wear my new badge as long as I can. Uh, as I recall, the, uh, what you just said was you're, you're not going to uh, adapt this, the state standards. Uh, we're going to, you're going to recommend upgrade or uh, continuing with the city uh, standards that uh, define wetlands? Yes, well. Well, I guess my question is, uh, what is, can you tell me and the commission again what the most significant differences are between the two? So they've changed um, how certain wetlands are scored. So um, it's based on habitat score. And what they've done is they've played around with some of those numbers where they've now taken uh, wetlands that score a five and they've put it down to uh, like this three to four habitat score range. So those that would have had a slightly larger buffer because of that will now fall into um, a slightly smaller buffer is, is what that is. So it's, it's just playing around with how we score and categorize the wetlands, but it doesn't really change much. Um, we're not, there are some requirements with that that we're not sure how that um, will, will affect the residents of Issaquah. So we're trying to find out more information before we Okay, thank you. with that. And the one other point I would make is they're both state um, sets of regulations. Uh, the one that we adopted in 2014 was um, put out by the state. The one for 2018 is guidance at this point. Mm -hmm. And so because we're still trying to understand the implications, as Doug indicated, we are, we are being cautious. I wasn't here last time when you guys started this. Um, I'm assuming that 99% of the um, form was what was already in the city's plans. And all we're doing is, is doing a little bit of uh, correcting. Correcting to, cleanup. Okay, so yes. the main body has already been there. Mm -hmm. Okay, just, just to be clear. There's some uh, mandatory changes from ecology that's reflected in the gap right. analysis that we include, but the body of it and the regulations are all pretty much the same. Okay. So our changes were, were based on a gap analysis and that was provided by Department of Ecology, which was essentially a checklist um, of all legislative and rural changes from the last time that we had done our shoreline master program update. Um, there are three types of actions mandatory that, that we've identified were mandatory, which we have to do, recommended, and then no change needed, needed because it either didn't apply to us or we already had that incorporated into our SMP. Um, then we looked at for consistency with city adopted plans and regulations, and that's where um, we're gonna integrate our current critical areas regulations because right now our critical areas regulations for the, for the shoreline master program are the older, the older regulations from pre-2014. So we're gonna update that to reflect our current critical area standards. And then um, consistency with the comp plan and um, with our development regulations as well. Um, so here are some of the gap analysis top changes that I've identified, and this isn't an exhaustive list. The, the rest of it is in the packet. So um, I'm gonna touch on these four, and if you have any questions regarding these, um, just let me know and then we can uh, have that discussion now. So um, we are non-conforming uses in develop in development consistency with um, some recent legislation. So we've changed our definition of non-conforming use to reflect that, and that can be found on the 
the draft shoreline master program on page 21. And then we've also added definitions for non-conforming developments and non-conforming lots. Um, and again, that's found on page 21. Um, that was, um, and then update our critical areas regulations. Um, this is to reflect the 2014 wetland rating system. So then we can not use the 2004 anymore. And we will do this by adopting our current critical areas regulations with our SMP in September when we go to council. Another recommended change that, we're go that we are going to do is the 90 day local review for wash dot projects. Um, we've added the language to um, the SMP and you can find that added language on page 72. And then we will also redefine our floodway definition in chapter, IMC chapter 1636 to reflect what ecology's definition is. And so then it will be the same between ecology, our shoreline master program, and our special flood hazard uh, code section in the IMC. I got a question here. The, the floodway plan that you're talking about, can you explain what that is? It's the, it is the, the flood um, standards for the city. So we've adopted, um, or we have regulations in place for development activities that happen within the 100 year flood plain. And this is just to ref, the def, for the definitions to all be consistent with state, our SMP, and our land use code. Is our current land use code more stringent or is the state new codes, the proposed changes, more stringent? I don't think it's really about being stringent. It's just the definition. Um, our shoreline master program just, it's the, the special flood zone code is just adopted as an appendix currently. So all, all we're going to do is just change the definition. I don't think it has anything to do with it being, one being more restrictive than the other. I think it's just for consistency. Okay, so I, I have another consequential question, and that is how would that affect people, uh, residents, who wanna purchase flood insurance? It shouldn't, it's not going to affect them at all. Okay. Um, this is gonna make us more, con I mean, if you look at, if you look in last time's packet on page 48, I assume that's the definition that we're then putting in all the documents, but it's related to the Federal Emergency Management um, uh, Agency and flood insurance. So it's, it's to make us consistent. Um, and uh, it does tie into the insurance program. Okay, so is that gonna make it more difficult for people to get flood insurance or? No, the maps are the basis for the flood insurance. Okay. And so we just wanna make sure we're using consistent terminology that will tie to the way um, those maps are used. Okay, I see, it's an <coughs> optimization of language then. Yes. Oh, for, okay, all right, thank you. Mm -hmm. And then the next section deals um, with consistency with adopted plans and regulations. So I've identified three of the top. Um, one is we don't have trails as a public use in our shoreline master program. And recently, Parks has adopted the park strategic plan and in that have identified the green necklace and they have ideas for a trail network throughout the city of Issaquah. So without these standards, um, at least within shoreline jurisdiction would have made developing um, their plan more difficult. Um, so we've added trails as a permitted use in all shoreline environmental designations. And then we provided dimensional standard language for public trails. Um, right now, private, it's four feet wide. And what we've done is the min minimum necessary based upon safety and anticipated volumes. So there isn't a set size limit, but what would limit it is projected volume of use. and. Um, ADA compliance, things like that. Do, do you also define um, trail use 
whether it be mountain bike, horse, ETV, is, um, is that under definition at all, or is it just I don't size? believe I don't believe it is. Um, we are looking at it specifically as non-motorized. So, um, but that could be something we add. I do have a question also concerning the um, the trail use in wetlands area. Does that jurisdiction go into Lake Sammamish State Park because of our partnership? Um. The reason why I bring that up is because Friends of Lake Sammamish uh, State Park and Cascade Bicycle Alliance and uh, some other organization are thinking about uh, adding new trails within East Lake Sammamish State Park. Okay. Um. To connect South Cove to the trail, East Lake Sammamish Parkway Trail. I can help answer that, so. You have to come oh, to the. The microphone. You come out Otherwise, nobody can hear you. Yeah, and so there'll actually um, be an open house on the Lake Sammamish State Park Master Plan, I, th I believe, next week, uh, where there will be some presentation materials and any uh, trail trail development. It would be on the outer edge of the buffer wherever possible, and it'd have to go through minimization criteria. Um, which is, it's a set of criteria. I don't know them all off the top of my head, but basically you have avoid, to- Avoid, minimize. Yeah, avoid, minimize. Mitigate. Avoid, minimize, mitigate, and, <laughs> and, 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 and compensate for impact yeah. and rectify. Yeah, so an applicant, if, if it happens to be the state park, they would have to walk through those steps in an application. Um, yeah, with the city. So that, that would be, they would have to go through a stringent set of requirements even with a trail development project if it were in the wetland buffer. And yeah, so this open house will actually um, talk a little bit about that. So will our actions here on this commission um, affect that potentially at all? It, in a way, Yes, because now it is, it's going to be, we're going to have it identified as a use and there, we handle shoreline permitting within Lake Sammamish State Park so that they would have to comply with our trail standards, which we didn't have any before. So now we're, we're setting it as that it's, it's an allowed use in all shoreline environmental designations. Okay, so if we do do that, then shouldn't we possibly, shouldn't we include um, the state park in our discussion of these trails in our, in our proposed amendment here to change the language in our wetlands package? Um. Name specifically, the, oh, I'm trying to remember the name here. I think the language covers all trails that are in the city of Issaquah. So I don't think that we need to specifically pull out the state park because you have the, if the city is responsible for making the final decisions and these are the codes and the, that the city is using to uh, overcome or use throughout the city, then it should be obvious that they have to go through the same kind of mitigated circumstances. And this would also just be for shoreline jurisdiction within Lake Sammamish State Park. If it were just, if it was in a, a wetland buffer that would probably, it, it could be out of shoreline jurisdiction and then just with our critical areas ordinance where they would be restricted largely to the outer 25% of, of the buffer. Okay, so let me Does present this. Does anybody else have any questions? Alice? Um, my question is about the dimensions of the potential public trails that says there's the minimum cited but there's no maximum. Is that implicit in other provisions or does that need to be considered? No, we, we're, what we are trying to do is just minimize it. So whatever, whatever we come up with um, based on volumes and type of use, 
a minimum that would accommodate our expected volumes. That's what we're trying to do. Um, and that would be in the judgment of the city. Okay. So just circling back to this one question here, I just want to make it very quick. The amendments that we're going to be making to the shoreline master plan will impact East, uh, the Sammamish State Park. And if we are going to be doing that, then shouldn't we run this by um, the Parks Department and the Friends of East Lakes, uh, the Friends of Lake Sammamish, to ensure because they're already on this bandwagon moving forward, and if we're going to put a roadblock in front of them from doing something that's um, a great benefit to the community and a potential cost hurdle, then we're kind of shooting ourselves in the foot, wouldn't we? I wouldn't necessarily characterize what we're doing as preventing Lake Sammamish State Park from doing any of the trails. What we are what we are providing with this is actually having some sort of standards and shoreline jurisdiction that allows this use. Um, prior to this, we had no standards, so is kind of a gray area. Could you actually do it? Um, I, and I think the other thing that I would add is, first of all, Parks reviewed this draft. Um, so, um, we've been coordinating with them. Okay. And um, uh, Lake oh, Sammamish State Park is a state agency. Uh, DOE is a state agency. They're both um, intended to be balancing a number of uh, goals. I mean, parks is one. Protection of shorelines is another. Uh, and uh, as I understand it, correct me if I'm wrong, trails, I mean, part of the reason that we've put that in there is that there is this value of giving people access to these areas while trying to do it in a way that does not harm them. And that, that I think, we felt that that was a gap because it was not clear in what ways trails, whether trails could be there and if they could in what ways they should be there. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that all the right stakeholders are knowledgeable and moving forward kind of together. Maybe not always in agreement, but at least they know. Mm -hmm. So, okay, I'm satisfied with that, thanks. Okay. Um, <clears throat> our second uh, top change is development standards conflict between shoreline environment and zoning. So. In 2013, our shoreline master program was adopted in February of 2013. In April, I believe it was April of 2013, our Central Issaquah plan was adopted, which changed zoning designation throughout Central Issaquah. Um, we've been operating our shoreline master program now with the old zoning um, for that section of the city. So what we are doing is just updating that with the standards in place for the correct zoning. And that you can see is reflected on page 40 through 44 of the draft SMP, not the actual packet. So I'm sorry, I didn't, for page that would be. Um, and then earlier today, I've also identified a couple of mistakes with that that I will be correcting just some some zoning that was labeled incorrectly on there. So we'll be fixing that as well in the coming days to reflect correct zoning. And then our last identified top change is actually quite a few in number, but they're all mostly, or they're, they're just updating, um, zoning codes that are in our SMP to reflect the correct zoning code that we have in our land use code. Um, and just so sprinkled throughout this, you're going to see um, IMC references changing to, to just the correct standards. And that discussion. Did any of you find any other um, questions on what's going on or why? I think the, uh, <laughs> the 
the plan, the program that's presented here is very detailed and um, I know that I was, I'm the only one that was on the committee when it originally came to planning policy, 2013. Mm -hmm. And we went back and forth of uh, setbacks and you know, there's a, a map in there, a picture of where the setbacks are and, and that was decided well, we didn't decide, we recommended how we wanted to put it together. So I know that that's still in there and um, the reason, reasons for all of those comes out in the explanation here. So I was, I was pleased with, uh, it basically goes one to one on uh, what we had decided back then. And that's why I asked, is it anything else changed or is this the original one? So you guys took what we, talked about and created this master plan at that time, and then it never came back to us, so we never saw it. So, yeah, uh, you know, Joan, I think you're making a great point, and I think it probably came to you in 2012 if it was adopted in 2013, but February 2013. But um, that was a massive overhaul of the Shoreline Master Program with a very different approach and um, uh, really a, a very thorough um, examination of um, sort of best available science and things. We have a plan before that? Yes, but it, it just needed kind of a major overhaul. Okay. And so that's why this time it's a much lighter touch because uh, a lot of the techniques are, are still solid and sound and we're really updating um, in the kind of categories that Doug, um, so. As things change, you're always going to get updates, uh, mm -hmm. and it's nice to see that they're just small ones, actually. Any discussion? Yeah, after reviewing it, that's kind of what it seemed like to me, is a lot of this is just playing catch up with what the state is doing. Mm -hmm. um, you guys cleaning up certain language definitions, and then as far as the trail earlier, it looks like you guys are just trying to establish a baseline. So it seems pretty clear. I mean, I read it earlier, and you know, again, some of the stuff we did last last meeting was kind of trying to get a little bit more answers about some of those definitions and things. So, again, it looks uh, looks pretty thorough. Randy, do you have any thoughts? Uh, I not that haven't been voiced by fellow commissioners in terms of the quality of the work uh, and the longevity and the fact that uh, it's a living document. Uh, it's going to be reviewed on a regular basis and I believe, as I think I said in the first meeting that I attended, that uh, uh, because of the salmon and orca situation, which is an international issue, and because of our unique position in the topography and the ecology of those two increasingly uh, um, controversial uh, icons of the Pacific Northwest, we're going to see a lot more effort on the part of all the government entities from the national government down to Issaquah to uh, improve the habitat. And this is, you know, this is a big part of it. And I think it's uh, what I've been able to absorb and read so far. Good stuff, good work. But it's a work in progress, and it's going to be until something starts turning around out in the salt water. Well, what's interesting is I don't know if anyone saw that report about all the plastics yeah. they've been measuring and how that affects the streams, and obviously these salmons run through there. So obviously that just came out, I believe, this week when I first read it about how they were taking samples from California and other places. So like Randy said, a living document. <laughs> I think the states are doing a fairly good job of keeping waterways clear of, of the plastic and other stuff. I know having coming from another country and seeing all of the stuff that they allow all around their shoreline, it was really disappointing to me. But glad on the same thing that we aren't doing that, we're doing a better job of it. So, where would you like to go with this? Do you want to open the public hearing? Mm -hmm. Yes, I know, but we're, are we done with? Okay. Doug, did questions? you have those the corrected language that you wanted to show? I mean, 
I know we have a vast audience to hear from tonight, um, but uh, it might be uh, good to look at those two pieces just um, uh, in case anyone wanted to comment on them. Do I have access to the well, I, D drive? Well, I was thinking of the, um, there was some revised language that you were proposing. That's in the draft SMP. Okay. I don't know if I can access it. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I thought that was going to be a part of tonight. I misunderstood. Is there any input from the Department of Ecology in the way of um, the, the direction that we're going and, and how we, uh, you know, mix things together? Hi, this is Maria Sanderko with the Department of Ecology. Um, one of the next steps after the close of the public hearing and comment period, the city is actually going to submit the proposed amendments. Uh, we're calling it an initial submittal to Ecology, where we're going to provide an initial review or an, an initial determination um, that the proposed amendments are consistent with the Shoreline Management Act and the SMP guidelines, and then share that back with the city before the city adopts it. So you kind of have that preliminary information from us, that transparency. And then after the city does adopt the, these amendments, then then they'll uh, you'll submit it to us for a final determination and final approval. So, so I'm sure that you have gone over some of this stuff. Uh, yes, and I have. I think I have provided some preliminary comments on the on the document to city staff. I don't know if it's been incorporated yet or not, but um, yeah. Okay. Okay. Just wondered if there was any big hiccups or anything that you was glaring no that way. you missed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nothing that I needed to, you know, throw a wrench and everything, and you know. <laughs> well, I'd like to know that up front uh, before it gets right, and that's a that's a big uh, purpose of this initial determination, which is a new process for us. Is that um, cities kind of wanted that upfront feedback from Ecology? Is it, are we on the right track or not? So that's what we're trying to do um, with this initial determination. So that'll be the next step that we go through. Thank you. So um, with that, I'm going to reopen the public hearing and ask if anybody would like to speak at the public hearing. And I'll open it at 7.04. Would anybody like to speak at the public hearing? I think you have to do it three times, so would anybody like to speak at the public hearing? Seeing none, hearing no, uh, Nobody that would like to speak. I'm going to close the public hearing at 7.05. With that, um, I think, do we have to vote on this? Um, yeah, on the findings of fact. Uh, okay, so in the back of your packet, there is a finding of fact that basically um, is a shortened version of what's going on and what, what uh, um, the amendments are and the rationale for approving it. And so um, so it will go on to whatever department of the city council is gonna look at it next. I need a motion to approve uh, the finding of facts as are written in the uh, three-page document that you received from the city. Two page, yeah, three-page document. I would like to make a motion to approve the findings of fact proposed in the documents and recommendations of the shoreline master plan. Without any? Without, uh, without any additional uh, modifications or corrections. Do I have a second? Second. Again, I'm going to ask, is there any other comments or changes? Hearing none, I'll call for the question. All those in favor of, of sending the findings of the fact on to the city council, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion passes. So um, the only thing that's on our agenda is um, the upcoming schedule. But I, I'd like to, um, all of you have, before we do that, all of you have gone through the training, and there were some changes that um, were spelled out in the way that meetings are run. 
and I would like to get your opinion. If, when I started on the, on the Planning Policy Commission, it was run basically exactly the way it's run now. But if you go to the city council, it's very more, much more formal, and you know you have to be recognized before you speak. Uh, do you want to go that into that? I think it's going to be up to you whether you, how you want this meeting run. Do you feel comfortable the way it is, Randy? Well, I, uh, Madam Chair, the uh, the only, it's not even a concern, but uh, I, the weighing my words here, as litigious as our society has become uh, in, in all areas, I don't think we can err uh, in being too formal. Uh, when, when things are pulled out and reviewed four years later in, in a courtroom, uh, I believe there's less potential for error or misspeaking uh, or misdirection uh, if it's if it's uh, closer to Robert's rules uh, in well, terms of the conduct conduct of the of, of the meeting, and right. I don't I haven't really had that much experience here, so I'm just saying as a general rule, uh, with our responsibilities, you know, I don't think you can be too careful these days. Any other comment? I think for, from my experience over the past year, I think um, I think the rules that were covered in training were were very helpful. Um, I think they're mainly there to aid that we have good discussion. Um, everyone on the commission is free to speak and we don't talk over each other and uh, argue with each other. I haven't really witnessed that on this commission the last year. Um, we have gotten off topic maybe on a couple occasions and when that's occurred, Joan, you've kind of jumped in and kind of structured that at the time when it's needed. Um, so I'm fine with the current style of the commission. I was... Uh listening to them and tried to get, that's why I called on all of you to make sure that you all had your, your say in whatever you had the opportunity to speak. So um, if, if it's okay, we'll continue the way it is, but I will try to add some more formal, um, I don't know how exactly to do that. I don't want you to raise your hand, you know. Uh, and you guys get so excited about the questions that you want to ask, it's kind of hard to say, well, wait, you had, had your turn, you, can't, you could only talk once. So um, we'll, we'll see what we can do and how we can put it together, just to add a little bit more formality to I, it. I've been in those situations where it's, it's definitely more formal and it's, it's follows closer to Robert's rules. And I understand Randy's point, but I, I, th I think like you said, it can sometimes stifle a discussion and to Bill's point, you know, occasionally you get to off topic, but it is, I mean, I think everyone here is respectful of one another. Everyone here has been probably most likely in a situation like this where everyone knows where to yield properly. <laughs> you know, as far as actually litigation, I, I don't know. This is my first commission. I've been in a different set of circumstances where Robert's rule was applied and minutes were taken, but uh, I- We do have. <laughs> There's formality. Yeah, we do Absolutely. half of it, so, okay. We, we, you know, we know that we've already been to this, you know, Issaquah has already been to the U.S. Supreme Court and lost uh, over procedure. So, uh, I did know, not know that. <laughs> don't want that to happen again. That's the no. Okay, well. What year was that? Was we'll take that under advisement. Was there any other thing that you heard that you might want to, more information or question about or? As far as the training? Yeah. I thought uh, staff and, and James, I believe his name is, Jim, the oh. city attorney did a fantastic job. Oh, good. Oh. Yeah, I'd like to comment. I like the, uh, t the, the attorney being present. It was mm -hmm. very, very helpful. Yeah. Um, it seemed to work better than the video because you could actually ask questions. <laughs> yeah, he was very, he was the right person for the job. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was a good, uh, overall view of, of what you need really to understand on this commission, so. Um, good, I'm glad. So, uh, do you want to go over the schedule or do you want to end the meeting? Uh, Madam Chair, I do have two things I'd like to mention. Okay. The first, it, this was mentioned earlier, but this came out, uh, uh, Commissioner uh, Fall referred to this. This is the meeting that's coming up with the State Parks Commission 
just on the 26th, and it will be held 25th. in Pic our 25th. I'm sorry. I just forwarded it to you it'll all. Be, yeah, it'll be held in uh, um, Pickering Barn, and I agree with Commissioner Fall. It's it's a we interested folks need to, I think attend there because this has really big ramifications for where the park goes. So I'm glad it came up in the formal discussion. Mm -hmm. And the second thing is I was browsing around in the Issaquah Library as I normally do and I came across this book which is Past at Present in Issaquah, Washington. It was published in 1967 and I would recommend this to everybody that has anything to do with Issaquah, whether it's residential, governmental, or occupational, because there are, it's, it's fascinating in the first place. I learned about the first settler here being, settler's family being killed by Native Americans in a dispute. But the other thing is, if you look through this, it was done by a husband and wife team, um, there is significant lamenting as early as the 1960s about loss of the character of Issaquah because of development and growth. And it, it's just a great, it's not vicious or anything, it's just kind of a lamenting, like, oh, our little town is becoming a little bigger town. Does, does it talk about transportation? Uh, it, <laughs> as a matter of fact, it does, in, in, a, in a way. But anyways, it's just, it's just a really cool little uh, hometown product that the, the reason I mention it is because Discussions of growth and the impact and the nature of the community are are not a decade old. Right. And who's it by, Randy? That's it's not here. It's by uh, is it? the art is done. Well, here's an example. This is a map of Issaquah that's hand drawn by the the uh, author's wife. The author is Edwards R. Fish. Oh, it is with Harriet original Fish. sketches by Harriet Fish. Yeah, Harriet was she's super famous here. So I was one. I didn't realize she and her husband wrote it together. I always just thought it was Harriet. And there's some really interesting new st stuff yeah. that I learned in there about this. We had a pretty rough past. We did. <laughs> we did. Thank you, Madam Chair. That's it. So going back to the state park, 10 years ago, <coughs> I think uh, there was this fear that the state was going to come in and build office buildings on, on Lake, in Lake Sammamish in the park. And so we had a a committee that was formed, um, and we met for three years to plan the perfect park and what was going to go into it and whatever. And the plan came out, it was great. I hope that some of those same ideas are incorporated into, you know, what's coming up now. Right. So um, I hope they, uh, I mean, we spent three years discussing every possible facet of of the park, so the I'm looking forward to having, you know, it got to a point where, oh, it's great, it's great, but we have no money to do any of this, so, <laughs> so it kind of died, so. The link that I sent has your work on there, oh, uh, the previous plan, and um, talks about options and pieces. It's a nice website post, so you all can be totally educated when you go to the, um, the open house, but I what? just forwarded it to you. It just came to us tonight. So it's meeting. just it, just now. It just yeah. I just so I forwarded it because I remembered I got it right when I was closing down my machine and I went ooh the state park this is awesome so I was glad they mentioned it too. One of the buildings that was designed to go in there it, before it was it, well it hasn't been built. Uh, it got a national award for for um, the environmental issues that they took care of in that building. So but it was never built because they ran out of money. <laughs> So, with that, if you want to discuss the schedule. Um, I would just say the schedule is changing as we speak, so um, I'm not completely sure what um, will happen on the 27th, but we're, um, we'll let you know as soon as we know. But things are, um, things are fluid in the office. <laughs> is the next meeting the 27th? I thought it was the 28th. Um, my eyes say the 27th. Did we get the date wrong? It says the 27th on the docket. Right, that's what I'm looking at, but I don't know. I often, I've been noticed to mm -hmm. do typos before in the really? in the calendar. Yes, I know. It's, <laughs> it's frightening to even think that, but yes. Can you give an example? <laughs> I'll give you 10. <laughs> Just today. It doesn't make any difference if it's 27th or 28th. I will not be here, so. Okay, so no, Joan. <laughs> Good to know. I did have a question about something in the training. I don't know if it's sure. better that I maybe ask after the session. Um, 
unless you think it, anyone would benefit. Yeah, it, well, basically sure. it was it, it, James, the city attorney, mm -hmm. I don't know him that well, basically was discussing um, the Open Records Act. And I guess what I was noticing the is a lot Open Meetings of, Act? Yes, open and meetings? well, okay. also the records because if there oh, is a records public act. records, yeah. if there's a situation, they could possibly someone could ask and start asking for records. Right. So I noticed a lot of obviously city staff, other people have emails for that purpose. I'm sure most of us probably use personal emails because we don't have one issued by the city. Is there, I mean, I know there's no problem with creating your own account. Is there a problem by saying something, you know, using like commish or would the city say, no, don't use anything that would show um, city of Issaquah type thing? Um, I think because you're an advisory board, mm -hmm. um, it's not as um, critical to someone doing an open records act to, to pull email records from you all. It, what they would be pulling is if I'm sending you information like a packet or an update or a something, and that's why you're never to discuss things in email because that's like a meeting, a computer meeting, and so we can't do that either just mm -hmm. for those sorts of reasons is for the open, the public meetings. The Open Meetings Act. Now you got me mixing them up. Um, but I don't think, I know council members have two different emails the work, you know, their home one and then the city one because they do make decisions. They can have their emails pulled when there's a, a, a public request. Um, but I think for you all, um, you know, just so, be, so, oh, I are think, you, you're I think in. they can have their emails requested. That was it's kind a of legislative what I was action. Yeah. I, I know it's less likely. Right, I'm right. just thinking they would never be discussing anything, though. Well, um, you just don't know. So I, I think the most prudent is to set up a Gmail or, you know, an account that you just use for this business. Um, I will tell you that in the last, say, five to ten years where I've heard that recommended, only maybe one or two commissioners on each commission has done that. Um, but that I, I'm not trying to dissuade anyone. I'm oh, just no. saying it's not that common uh, a choice by most commissioners. And I wouldn't think it's very common, but I, my understanding from the attorney is, again, it, it, they don't need necessarily a reason to ask for your records. So again, if somebody did want to go fishing, which is fine, nothing really to hide, but I guess my point would be, because I've already decided to do it, to quit having my, some, my personal stuff intermingled with the commission, would the city of Issaquah find it problematic if, you know, it said J.R. Voice, Commish, what, would that be problematic? Would the city say, no, you can't use language like that? I guess that's I, what I'm I don't to think to. we evaluate um, okay. your, as long as it's not obscene. Um, I don't think we would evaluate it. I think we just would ask for you to let us know and then we update our contacts with whatever email you choose to have, whether it's commingled or... You Even know. if I put like Jason at Issaquah.gov, well, obviously not Issaquah.gov, but Issaquah public planning policy, um, there wouldn't Jason, be a problem. Jason PPC Issaquah at, at gmail.com. I, I mean, I understand why you might choose to do that. I, um, you know, I think we have the records to show if you when you're on the commission mm -hmm. and what period of time that might apply. Right, right. Yeah, I'm not worried about it, but I figured it'd be nice to separate that from my sure. other emails, so. Just okay. let us know when you do, so we can make sure your, all your stuff goes there. Okay. So, um, are there any other questions? <coughs> no? <coughs> then I'm going to close the meeting at 7.21. Well done. This is almost the fastest meeting we've had. It is.